Hey y'all, it's Carrie from Razor Sharp Crafts, and I haven't seen you guys in months. Um, so I'm going to do a quick update video, and then I'm going to do um, a little project video. But I'm doing them separately, that way those that just want to see the project can just watch the project and um, not have to listen to me. And those that want to be like, hey, where the hell have you been? can watch this and find out where I've been. So I looked and oh I think the last time I did a video was like six to eight months ago and there is a reason. So those of you that follow me regularly know that um, we bought a house last May, um, 2015 May you know, um, and uh, so we got all settled and it was a really busy summer. Um, my kids went and spent time with their grandma in New York, but they did that while we were moving so that way I didn't have to deal with three kids while moving. Um, and then there was the whole getting the house settled. Now here's the thing. Um, again, those of you that follow me know that we are a military family, so we've moved a lot. Well, we're not moving anymore. We bought the house, we're staying here. My husband got out of active duty and went guard, so he's stays right here in Ohio except for when he does his annual work and whatnot so there's no more moving nothing this is our house forever and I'm so happy um, I told my husband I don't even want to move in 30 years I've had enough moving in the first 30 years of my life I don't want to do it anymore <laughs> so um so yeah so there was a lot of settling to do there was a lot of boxes that we hadn't opened in years and I know everybody says well if you haven't opened boxes in years why bother opening them? Just toss them. Well, we didn't open them because we never really hung pictures on the wall or displayed stuff. And it was like a lot of memento stuff that was in those boxes. But because we moved like every two years, we didn't hang that stuff up. We left it in boxes so it was safe. Um, so I was not about to throw anything out before going through them. So last summer was a lot of going through boxes and unpacking and um, realizing that I have a lot of decorating to do in my house because I've never decorated before and it shows that I've never decorated before. Um, so there was all that. Then there was getting the kids school switched over and getting all the paperwork done there and all that fun stuff and of course getting all the utilities switched and I was doing all of it because my husband was working and all of the um, Utilities were all in my name anyways because I was the one that set everything up because you know my husband's the one that works I'm the stay-at-home mom, so um, I take care of all that stuff So then it was um, Time for me to make a change and I enrolled in a community college here local um, And I just well, I'm <laughs> actually tomorrow. I'm getting ready to head back but um, I did the fall semester and I am now going to school uh, full time for uh, visual communications, which is graphic design. Um, so like I said, I did a full semester, la uh, I did full time um, th for the fall semester. I did uh, 14 credit hours or something like that. And let me tell you what, it is a lot of work. Like, on top of being a wife and a mother of three crazy little boys, and then, you know, you all know that um, my middle son, Michael, he has uh, therapies that he goes to every week, and we now live almost an hour away from his therapy. It's about 45 minutes away. And that's without traffic or with light traffic. If we get a traffic jam or something, we're stuck. So, yeah, so there's that. And then his therapies are either an hour to an hour and a half long. So... Um, so there's that on two nights a week and then there's my schooling and I just got crazy busy. So I hadn't done anything in my craft room unless it was schoolwork. Well, and to the point, um, I wasn't even on Facebook. Like the only time I was ever on Facebook was like if I was sitting in a waiting room at a doctor's office or the therapy office. And even then I wasn't really on because, um, I took the time to actually talk to people because... <laughs> You know, with a crazy busy life like I have, I don't get to talk, just sit and talk with people much. So yeah, so um, I didn't really do any crafting at all, um, like I say, except for the work that I had to do for my classes. Excuse me. Um, 
and uh, but I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, I start back tomorrow, um, and if you're watching this later, or if I don't even get this up today, um, tomorrow meaning January 11th. Hold on, I thought I just heard someone pull up. I don't know, just somebody with a loud exhaust app on the other road. Um, so, uh, tomorrow meaning January 11th, right? Yeah, today is the 10th. Yeah, okay. So I start back full-time tomorrow. Um, I'm taking 13 credit hours this semester, but I know this semester is going to be hard for me because two of the classes that I'm taking are um, history classes. And I know you're like, what the heck kind of history do you have for graphic design? And um, I'm doing the history of graphic design, and then I have a art history class, and I'm doing... Oh gosh, Renaissance to Contemporary Periods. And literally the book for that class is like this thick. And I'm not even joking. If I had it in my craft room, I'd show you, but it's downstairs on our bookshelf, but it's like that thick. Um, so that, I've never been good at history, so um, I'm hoping there's a way I can work it to where I will be good in these history classes. Um, so I'm excited though. I really enjoyed last semester, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some of the work I did last semester. So i got to zoom this out. Pay no attention to this stuff over here. Some of it goes to the project that um, I'm going to do next. Oh, and so for those of you that want to see what I'm going to do next, I am going to get mad at Pinterest for shutting off on me. Oh, I hate you, Pinterest. <sighs> really? Really, 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 really. Oh my gosh. I had it open on my Pinterest screen to where all I had to do was like reopen my iPad and it would be boom right there. Yeah, of course it went away. All right, hold on. At least I know about how far down I gotta scroll down to find it. Hopefully. These things shouldn't have moved right there. I'm going to be doing this Pinterest project, making a menu board for my family. It's gonna be I can't really say different. It's not really going to be that different, but I'm going to put my own little changes on it. Um, but anyway, so that's the project I'm going to be doing. I'm going to video it after this, so it'll be up soon. But um, I'm going to show you my graphic design work. And then, sorry about the glare. There's not much I can do about that. But um, this is my VIS 1100. This was Design Basics. This is like the basics to do. So these are my portfolios. These are what I'll hold on to to get a job with later when I uh, graduate. Uh, I've been told I'll have at least um, like four, four or five of these by the time I'm done with my degree. So I open it up and this is the college that I'm going to, Sinclair Community College. And I enjoy it. So here shows we get these and these are the project write-ups that tell like what we have to do and it gives an example picture. But what I'm going to focus on are these. These are what I create. And so this one was just basically a self-portrait. And so I did my craft room is the background. My three children. My oldest is holding the frying pan because I'm a stay-at-home mom and I cook a homemade dinner every night for my family. Um, and then my youngest two are holding uh, my flight picture from when I was in basic training for the Air Force. And then this is just cropping and then using different, like this is monotone, dual tone, grayscale, so it's just different um, coloring factor or like color tones. There we go. So I'm not going to bother showing like this part, which is the, um, the project write up because that's not really that. I mean, it's important for it, but for what I'm showing, I'm just showing you guys what I've been up to. So, why can't we focus on the picture here, camera there? I think it's focusing. If it's blurry, I'm sorry. I can't really tell with this stupid glare. Eh, it's going to make it a little bit darker, but at least it gets rid of most of the glare. Um, so, this one is using only pictures um, tell a story and so we start with the word and if you can't read that it says refreshing 
So this is a refreshing day in the life of Bob. <laughs> and it's just a random guy. It's a picture from the internet. And so it goes through like his whole day. Like he's sleeping, he wakes up, he stretches the morning dew. His morning Red Bull because I love Red Bull. And it's me that's making it blurry. Every time I put my hand in there, it makes it blurry. So, and then he's taking a shower, spraying Axe. Uh, amusement park. Um... Ice water, iced tea, they're all like refreshing things. Um, exhilarating was a, another word for refreshing. Um, so he bought his, he went to the Ford dealership and bought his dream car, an old classic Mustang. Then he put on his swim trunks and he went to the beach and he had fun with his friends and they splashed and then they jumped around at the sunset. And then he got too much sun, so we put on some aloe. And all of us know, come on camera, why are you doing this to me? All of you know when you get sunburn and you put aloe on, it's one of the best feelings in the world. It's so refreshing. The sunset, and then some drinks with friends. Now with this um, project, we had to do at least 15 photos. We had to take them ourselves. So mine are these two. The Red Bull, the shower, the axe, um, the ice water ones, the swim trunks, the beach shells, the aloe, the two sunsets, and the bottle of vodka. So, and then we put these in on the computer in a program called Adobe InDesign, and then we print them out and trim them down, and voila. So for this one, um, was just basically, uh, we had a few words and then we had to, um, using only points and lines, you had to show the word in the picture. So this is tension, and this is spontaneity, and this is conformity, and these are all point. And then for line, I got conformity, aggressive, aggressive and spontaneity. So this was pretty fun. We drew these on the computer. Well, we drew them by hand first, and then we drew them on the computer, and then printed them. Then came into my world. We had to make um, one of these in 3D. So I have my conformity line, which was like this on the previous page. And so this is the view. You get that from, and then... These are just additional pictures that, you know, show your whole design. And then tension point was this one. And this is the view that you get going down in. And then just a couple others. And one had to be made with what we call Bristol board, which it's like a heavy cardstock, um, but even heavier, basically. And then this one had to be made with wire. Or well, you could have made your line one with wire and your point one with Bristol board if you want to, but one had to be made with Bristol board and one had to be made with wire. Um, so, and then again, we were given some words and then we had to, this time using only four squares, we had to um, show the word with four squares. So I have order, increase, and bold. And then... Sorry, there's that stupid glare again. Congestion, tension, and playful. And then in the next project, we once again had to make them 3D. So this one, I got kind of creative. And this is my, oh, my husband's home, so let's get this done. This is my bold, yeah bold and so that you see in the front here this was tension and that you saw right here which is on the back part like all of the like these two are all built out of the back of this and then this was increase and it was so increase was here tension was here and then these two were just a little extra And then the next project we had to carve an aluminum block and then uh, print it with um, ink. 
So we had to do one monotone, one with primary colors, one with any complementary colors, and then one of our choice. So I did, um, for complement, it was supposed to be a uh, Christmas card. So I did, or a holiday card, depending, yeah, all that controversy. So I did blue, because blue's my favorite color, and then I just did red, yellow, blue, and then I did the red and green for since it's holiday. And then for this one, what I actually did was I printed it in black, and then I colored it with stickles, because that was designer's choice. So, let me pause. Okay, sorry about that, I'm back. My husband got home early, and so I was talking with him. But all right, so yeah, I was showing you this one. So like I said, um, and this was designer's choice, that's why it was able to be um, kind of crazy. Although my professor did say it was looked more crafty than designer, but she still liked it. I got an A in this class. Actually, I got all A's. Um, I, had, I ended with a 4.0 average. So, yeah, I'll brag, I don't care. <laughs> so then the other class that I took was design drawing. Now this one scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and um, because I've always been told I couldn't draw, like I had art professors in high school that were, or art teachers in high school that were just like, yeah, don't draw, you suck at it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was always one of those ones that said I couldn't draw a stick figure to save my life. And now I'll show you what I ended up doing. So let's get this back into frame. Again, I'm sorry about the quality. For some reason, this sucks. Maybe once I get some money again, I'll buy a camera that gets me a 1080 H HD HP. 10 Anyways, the very, really good high def. This is only 720. So this is design drawing. And so this is the way our pages look. And um, this is cylinders. And this was learning to draw ovals and straight lines and then shading. So this is what we call our master micron, which is just done, done, done with a micron pen. All this lettering is done by hand um, and with uh, just different size Sharpies. And then this is done in pencil and shaded in pencil. And up here we have pictures of what they're supposed to look like. So that way, you know, somebody looking at a portfolio knows what it's supposed to look like. Just knocking stuff around here. So um, this one's going to be moved around a lot. Cause... So, and then these are the two black and whites. And this is done on uh, tissue paper. Not like the tissue paper that you uh, can get my hand out of there so the camera will focus on pictures. Focus camera, focus. Let me just, there. For some reason, if I just hit the zoom a little bit, it makes it focus. There. So, um, not the tissue paper like you, like we use with crafting where we use it to get, um, like texture and stuff, but like a tracing paper. We call it tissue paper because, um, nobody that draws likes the word trace. So um, you do it on tracing paper and then um, you draw it with a micron pen and then you just using uh, Prisma color markers you use black and gray to get you, to get the uh, shading crop properly and what you do is you just you basically move the black around with the gray so it's pretty cool and then this one's done um, just by blending different colors together you get the different tones and shades kind of like you do with your Copics. But like I said, with these, we're using Prismacolor markers that are used for what we call rendering. So then there's project two was a wooden chandelier. And so here is the, what we call the master micron. Again, just drawn with a micron. And then here is the pencil rendition, rendering. Um, and again, just using different pencils. Um, my go-to for my outlining was always a B4 pencil. And my go-to for shading was always a B6, basically. I really like those. Um, so there's that one. And then... Dun, 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 there's the marker one. 
Same thing, just use different color Prismacolor markers to shade it and get the shading that you need, desire. And then these are the black and whites, which are done the same as the uh, cylinders, just using um, the tracing paper with a micron, draw it, and then using blacks and grays to uh, move the color around and get the shading properly. So next we do um, the chair, and with this one the chair is drawn with micron and rendered with markers, and then the background is drawn with pencils and rendered with pencils. So here is my final. I called it my chair vignette. And then we just did a little monotone uh, crop of the image just to uh, kind of add a little more to the page basically. Fill it out. Let me zoom in. That's out. So you can kind of see it all. Like all of it. Like I have this one little blue spot. <laughs> As my professor, I'm like, does that matter? That one little blue spot? She's like, nah, because you're going to have shadows over it. And half the time, if I don't point it out to people, they don't even notice it. Um, but there that is. This one, I, I was scared to death of this one. And then it ended up being one of my favorite projects. Like, I loved it. It was so much fun. Um, just the pencil shading and all that. It was just, it was a lot of fun. So that was mine. And let's zoom back out so we have the full page in here. So the next one was more emphasizing on um, rendering shiny surfaces and using blocking in the background just to kind of... Um, uh, da -da. Rendering shining surfaces. I'm trying to look at what that was the biggest thing was the rendering the shiny surface. Um, uh, oh, yeah, and using color to divide up mid ground, background, foreground. Um, so, yeah, it looks like an unfinished project, but it actually ends up looking really cool. Um, because you do get the shiny look. I'm going to zoom in just on that part. Sorry. So you see how it does get, looks like it's a shiny table. And you do that by just the way you render and drawing the reflections onto the table right through there. So. This one I had the, honestly, the part I had the most trouble with on this one was that damn rug. Oh, that was hard getting it because you basically do all your coloring right here and let your colors bleed back, but mine kept bleeding forward and then they didn't bleed back far enough and then like the color, the darkness here got too far back and it's supposed to fade all the way to white. So it goes, fades out and then to white. So, and then again, we just did a little monotone crop kind of to fill the page up and this was the project I thought I would love it the most and I ended up disliking it the most. Um, it was our first project where you're, you'd make the design. Like everything else we had like, um, we had this, we made this. But with this one we created it, like this isn't what we did. This is not like the other ones. But the reason I disliked it so much, um, I kept changing my concept because I just kept not liking it. I was just like, ugh, I don't like what I had done. I need something, I need to do something different. Um, I literally went through, uh, I believe it was five different concepts. My professor was like, Carrie, just pick one. <laughs> um, and then I don't even end up liking my final design. So here's what we call the bird's eye view. Um, and they, they're drawing, drawn to one point perspective. These are in pencil and this is what a bird would see if it flies over it from different angles basically and this is supposed to the front of this is supposed to look like it's pointing out at you I had a really hard time getting that effect with the shading so I just again I I got a good grade on it but I didn't um, I don't feel I was real successful in this one but my professor was like that's what makes you will make you a good designer is knowing um, 
even though the design is, you know, decent, it's not the most successful. So, you know, like she had said, if I was given more time, I probably would have worked on it more and done it and gotten into, um, and gotten a better final, um, concept. But I was running out of time. The semester was getting close to the end and I still had one more big project to do. So I just kind of left it. And if given time, I probably will go back and just work on these on here. And the main thing would be just to get it to where this does look like it's popping out at you. Um, and then I'd be happy with the design. So then this is the top front and side views of my toaster. So again, that's what it would look like if you look down on it from the top and you can see it's pointing out. And the front, again, it's supposed to look like it's coming out at you. And then the side of it, and these are like push buttons for lightly toasted, medium toasted, heavy toasted, bagel or bread. So you would just press it and it would give you what you wanted and then ups and, or up and down to make your bread um, go down. And then the up would be like a cancel button. And then here it is rendered in marker. I do like my colors on this one. Um, so top, front, side again, basically all the same, just this one's rendered in marker. And instead of, I used colors to show, um, this would be, I did yellow, orange, red, so it would be little heat, hotter, more heat, so it would be lightly toasted, or, and then it would get dark toasted if you had high heat. So that was my complete design of a toaster project. Oh, shoot, forgot about this one. Um, and then this is the, uh, what we call the three quarter views. And this is the, uh, did I put it on here? The, right here, the money shot. This is the one that's supposed to sell your toaster. It shows your, it's the best view of your toaster. It shows everything you want it to show. You have your side, you have your front, you have your top, everything's in there basically. So. And then one's in pencil, one's in marker. And then the final project, this one ended up being my one of my favorites along with the that chair vignette project. Um, this one was, uh, we could do a two point exterior house. We could do um, a one point, two point interior, uh, a totem pole house or a covered bridge. I think those were the four options. And I went with a covered bridge, two point in two point perspective. And um, the reason I went with this one is because it was the easiest to go the most whimsical with. And I wanted to go whimsical because I was really tired of everything being so, uh, everything having to be so perfect. So I wanted to be whimsical and fun. So for mine, I did the Mad Hatter Covered Bridge. And this is Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland inspired project. So you have the Mad Hatter's hat and it's, you got the path coming up and then it goes through the bridge and comes out the back. And then I used um, all the mushrooms and flowers and foliage and trees and stuff from the movie to fill, to give it the landscaping. And so the hat bridge is drawn in two point well the this part of the bridge is drawn in two point perspective and then everything else was kind of filled in like the the brim of the hat that you see here it'll be easier for you to see um um sorry it'll be easier for you to see <laughs> uh once i show you the colored pictures this is the master micron again that we always do and now i'm going to show you this is scanned into a computer and shrunk down this is the original and I actually had to cut um, it was almost an inch off the bottom like you see my little mushroom down here in the corner got cut off because I ended up making it a little too big um, I had it marked and then I don't know somehow I lost the marks and went larger um, so yeah and now I don't want just to see the big one before you see the oh well, I put those in there wrong. Mm -mm. Hold on, let's see if we can.
All right, why is this not coming out? Well, you guys got to see the big one before the little one this time. And now I cannot get that out. Oh, because I'm trying to, there we go. Okay, something, er, there it is. Okay, oh, talk about a job right there. All right, so you guys are gonna watch me correct my portfolio, which I cannot believe. Oh, I bet I know, my professor scanned mine to hang on the wall, and uh, I bet she put this in backwards. I just picked my portfolio up. Um, on Wednesday this past week so that would probably be why because this was one of the ones that she scanned so that makes sense I was gonna say I know I put these in the right way all right so you kind of got to see the big one ahead of time let me make sure the colored ones, all right. So I did, okay, normal in this class, we would just do um, the Master Micron and the colored one. And then the, uh, we also were supposed to do a digital one, but our class was behind due to um, uh, a lot of the class was lacking supplies because of the bookstore being out of stuff. And they were financial aid, so they had to wait till the bookstore got it in because they couldn't just go buy it elsewhere because the money was on their Tartan account, blah, 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 blah. So our class got behind, so we didn't do the digital rendition or rendering. I don't, yeah. Um, but I did the honors in this course, which means you do one extra rendition of one of the projects. So I wanted to work on my pencil skills because I'm not the best at it. So I did my project in pencil to work on it. So that is what this is. And again, that's the scaled down version. And this is the original. So, and again, um, basically B4 for my outlines and B6 for my shading. And now, here is the colored one. And this is just done with Prismacolor markers. The only part I would go back and it change would be this front part. Um, I only had like two colored grays, so it was really hard to get. Um, oh, some gradation going on there of the color, so it's a little bit lighter than I would have liked there, but I still think it looks pretty dang good. My light source is coming in from this side, so it would be actually really light there, anyways. And then here is the original. And I absolutely love it. I thought it turned out really well. I really like it. I think it's beautiful. So, um, and I can finally draw. So, and that was it. I am going to do the digital rendering of that project and put in here. Um, I just, uh, I'm waiting. I'm taking a class this semester that helps you learn the um, online, the uh, Adobe software a little better. And so I'm going to wait till I'm done with that class and then do it because I feel like I don't know the software well enough to do it on my own right now. So those are my two portfolios that I did this past semester. And uh, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to going back this tomorrow <laughs> and to what I'm going to learn and all that good stuff. So. So that is what I've been up to, and that is why you have not seen me. And that is why after this video and the menu board that I'm about to make video, you probably won't see me again for a little while. And I'm sorry about that, but um, getting this stuff done and do it, getting good grades on it, and then what spare time I do have spending with my family is what is what my priority is. Um, and I know a lot of you can... Uh, I know a lot of you understand that, and I'm glad that you do. So, um, yeah. So let me end this video now, because it looks like it's going to be quite a long one. 
but then I'll get all the stuff out and get it ready and we'll do the menu board um, video real quick. And I'm going to have it partially, I'm going to basically have a lot of stuff ready to roll with it. Um, that way it's not a really long video, but that way it is a process video so you can see, oh, I'm shaking and that's causing my screen to go crazy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna, um, it'll be a good process video so that way anybody that wants to know who can't make it just looking at it can see the steps. So, alright, let's get to it. I will see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye. Oh, and thanks for watching.